we all have cell phones and we take uh, images with the cell phone, photographs with cell phone. Have you observed that our cell phone photographs are different from what our eyes look at? The way we see a scene is different from what uh, the cell phones records. Have you observed it many times? The same image when you send it to your friends, that image may be looking different than what your cell phone has recorded. Have you observed this? Let us look at uh, why this is happening using some of the psychophysical concepts we have learnt in the previous classes. Let us start looking at how a camera records an image. We have a camera, the input to the camera is a, a light intensity. The camera records the image into pixel intensities. But what is the relation between this light intensity to the pixel intensity? This could be a, is it a linear relation or nonlinear relation? What could be the relation? Let us plot that into light intensity and a pixel intensity in the y axis. Then what we would get is a linear relation between the light intensity and the pixel intensity. The same thing if you look at uh, our eyes, the same light intensity if you input what our photoreceptors, photoreceptors see uh, nonlinear uh, such as, as this in the eyes. Okay. This is one of the reasons why our photographs, our cell phone cameras record a different image than what our eyes see, what we actually see. Now, how do we solve this problem? First of all, why eyes have this nonlinear relation? Why not it have same relation as the camera? So, the same graph what I have shown in the earlier plot is uh, slightly put it in different uh, format over here. In the x axis is the actual luminance, the y axis is the trajectory light and the blue line is for the eyes and uh, the purple line is for the camera. The eyes are much more sensitive to darker tones because of the nonlinear relation. If you look at the darker tones, the eyes are much more sensitive to the, the darker tones compared to the, the camera. So, that is the implication of having a nonlinear relation, the power relation which is less than and 0.5. So, what? So, because the eyes are sensitive for the darker tones, if you look at a, a original image, uh, this is a natural scene let us say, where the dark to light is continuously changing. If you linearly interpolate the, the intensity, let us say and then we will uh, digitize it. it, let us say it is a 32 level we wanted to uh, divide the whole intensity variation and using a 5 bit uh, encoding, then what we would get is like this. It is almost like uh, what our camera say this is what the camera is actually seeing it right. The same thing with a non-linearly if you encode it, this is what our eyes see. You can observe that in the darker region, you can see 
many variations. So, we are just for demonstration we are using the same phi bit uh, 32 level division of the entire uh, intensity variation. For this variation we can see that the darker region has much finer encoding much finer no variation we could observe it that is because for the nonlinear relation. This encoding is termed as gamma encoding. So, if you have an image which is recorded by a camera which has a linear relation in order to make it a image make it similar to what eyes have seen then we can change the, the linear relation into a nonlinear relation that is called the image camera. The raw image which is recorded using a linear we can uh, add a power relation as if in a eyes and then make it to uh, very similar to what our eyes have recorded then and that is called the image gamma or gamma image gamma encoding. Right? You are encoding the gamma into the image then that image looks much more closer to what your eyes have looked at. Okay. Now, this is what uh, the image gamma is when you display the image in a screen the each of the displays has its own uh, gamma, but this gamma is actually in the inverse. So, again if you look at the light intensity intensity in the x axis and uh, output intensity intensity in the y axis then the displays have the nonlinear relation but it in the y this is in the power relation with uh, uh, n greater than 1. So, this is inherent in some of the displays in some displays it is uh, 2 in some displays 3 and in some displays it is uh, 1 point uh, 1 or whatever. So, this is called the display gamma. So, you can change the display gamma you can actually uh, uh, modify it. So, the image gamma and the display gamma together when applied together it is called the system gamma together the final image will have this uh, uh, one. Ideally every display should have uh, uh, gamma one. If every display has a uh, ideal gamma one then we do not need to uh, uh, encode the images with gamma it can directly uh, we can uh, display on the um, screen but that is not the case in real conditions. This is one of the examples of the image uh, gamma encoding this is a original image. Now, after encoding the gamma gamma encoded image you can see the difference between this original and the gamma encoded image. In the original image if you look at the, the place where the darker regions are there the details are not very well visible whereas, in the gamma encoded image you can see the darker regions of the image the details are very well visible. So, the display gamma let us see how it influences the image. Let us take one original image with when it is displayed on the screen with a gamma 1 you can uh, see that that is the same as the image. When you increase this gamma to 1.8 you can see that the compensation the image 
encoded gamma encoded image is getting compensated. You can see that uh, you would be looking at the you know closer to the original image. When it is increased further, you can observe that there are or more darker regions are coming up and this is the the very high highly dark uh, uh, darker version of the image is coming up. If this is too much of bending then uh, uh, n is equal to 4 this is the gamma n is equal to 4 or gamma this is 4.0 where you can see that the image is getting darkened. So, ideally the image gamma and the display gamma should match and then result in system gamma 1. Most of the monitors have their inherent gamma in it. There are CRT monitors with a native gamma of 2.5. In the current days probably none of us use the CRT monitors but you can, uh, uh, you can uh, still there are some places where CRT monitors are used. You should know that that gamma is very, very high. So, without the gamma correction the image will be very different. So, when you send an image to your friend that friend may not see the same image as in your display because your display gamma is different from um, your display or your friend's display gamma. Unless you match the same display gamma, you and your friends may not see the same image. There are LCD monitors with a native gamma of uh, 1.2. Now, how do we know how much is the uh, gamma my display is? There is a very simple system or a procedure uh, researchers have come up with. Mm. So, your you can see an image in the screen where the top row has uh, three uh, gray levels, one is a darker medium and uh, the lighter one. The bottom row has uh, dithered black and white regions which is mimicking this uh, the gray level images in the top row. So, which row? Okay, we can say that this is a uh, uh, 25 percent of the dithering in the bottom row that is the mixing of black and white dots. Here it is a 50 percent mixing of black and white dots, here it is a 75 percent mixing of uh, 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 black and white dots. Here the black region is more and then white region is uh, uh, less 25 percent of the uh, white regions and uh, uh, 75 percent of the dark region. Here the inverse 25 percent of the black regions and 75 percent of the white region. Now, to find out the display gamma what uh, uh, which column looks approximately same in your display. So, in our case this uh, uh, first row where the darker gray and the 25 percent of the dithering this is called a dithering let me write it down looks similar. Therefore, our, our gamma of the monitor may be uh, may be at this level. So, matching the top row and the bottom row whichever we perceive uh, similar that is what leading to the concept of uh, uh, the gamma that may be the, the uh, display gamma which is such in your display. In order to make it little more uh, now finer the same thing uh, has many different levels of uh, 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 gray and uh, dithering. So, which top uh, which column has the same uh, uh, at least appearing to have the same top and uh, bottom. Let 
levels. So, for example, uh, in our system it uh, appears to be uh, it appears to be around this 1.4 or 1.7. So, this may be set as the the gamma in our display. Now, you can pause a minute of this video and then uh, uh, find out what is your uh, display gamma using this image. So, the concept of gamma is very important to have, have uh, the same image as what your cameras have recorded. In the virtual reality systems, you may be using many uh, images as textures and then textures should have the, the uh, should appear the same way what you have actually look, your eyes looked at it. For this to happen, you have to either encode the images or, or, or and you may have to adjust the display gamma uh, 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 appropriately. The oculus and the vive displays is have to have uh, uh, you know, uh, corresponding display gammas you need to find out first of all, all what is the gamma this VR systems uses and uh, probably you may have to correct the images according to the display gamma or the vice versa. Thank you.